Please rise for the national anthem. Namaste, everyone. My name is Lisa Ragu, and I'm proud to be singing the national anthem. Oh, So proudly we hail at the dialyze last year, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale love's fire or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, America. Greetings to my fellow Indians in India and around the world. Friends, this morning we have a very special person with us. He needs no introduction. His name is familiar to every person on the planet. His name comes up in almost every conversation in the world on global politics. His every word is followed by tens of millions. He was a household name and very popular even before he went on to occupy the highest office 
in this great country. From CEO to Commander in Chief, from boardrooms to the Oval Office, from studios to global stage, from politics to the economy and to security. He has left a deep and lasting impact everywhere. Today, he is here with us. It is my honor and privilege to welcome here in this magnificent stadium and magnificent gathering. And I can say I had a chance to meet him often. And every time I found the friendliness, warmth, energy, the President of the United States of America, Mr. Donald Trump. This is extraordinary. This is unprecedented. Friends, as I told you, we have met a few times, and every time he has been the same, warm, friendly, accessible, energetic, and full of wheat. I admire him for something more. A sense of leadership, a passion for America, a concern for every American, a belief in American future and a strong resolve to make America great again. And he has already made the American economy strong again. He has achieved much for the United States and for the world. Friends, we in India have connected well with President Trump. The words, the words of candidate Trump, Apki Bar. Trump Sarkar. Rang loud and clear. And his celebration of Diwali in the House, White House lit up millions of faces with joy and appreciation. When I met him for the first time, he said to me, India 
has a true friend in white house your presence here today is great testimony to that in these years our two nations have taken the relationship to new heights mr president this morning in houston you can hear the heartbeat of this great partnership in this celebration of the world's two largest democracies you can feel the strength and depth of human bonds between our two great nations people are at the heart of all relationships from houston to hyderabad from boston to bangalore from chicago to shimla from los angeles to ludhiana from new jersey to new delhi hundreds of millions are glued to their tv even though it is rather late on a sunday night in india millions around the world in different time zones are with us today they are witnessing history in the making <laughs> mr president you had introduced me to your family in 2017 and today i have the honor to introduce you to my family over a billion indians and people of indian heritage around the globe ladies and gentlemen i present to you my friend a friend of india a great american president mr donald trump
Hello, Houston. I am so thrilled to be here in the great state of Texas with one of America's greatest, most devoted, and most loyal friends, Prime Minister Modi of India. Thank you. Thank you. And Prime Minister Modi is doing a truly exceptional job for India and for all of the Indian people. It is my immense privilege to be here with him today at this profoundly historic event. We're especially grateful to be joined by over 50,000 incredible members of our nation's thriving, prospering, flourishing, and hardworking Indian American community. Thank you. Just a few months ago, in the largest democratic election in the history of our world, 600 million Indians went to the polls and voted overwhelmingly for Prime Minister Modi and his party. Congratulations, Mr. Prime Minister. That's a lot of people. Earlier this week, I understand you marked another important milestone. I know everyone here joins me in wishing you a very happy birthday. Happy birthday. I want to take a moment to address every resident of Houston. Affected by the recent horrible flooding, the entire American nation is standing by your side. We're ready. We love you. We support you. We will be there with you every single step of the way. I just left the Coast Guard hangar at Ellington Field, Joint Reserve Base, where I was briefed on the Texas flooding. We're working with your great Governor Greg Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Attorney General Ken Paxson, and Senators John Cornyn and Ted Cruz. Thank you very much. We're working hard together. My administration will not rest until you have fully recovered, restored, and rebuilt. And I know you will come back with the same tremendous spirit that we have shown every single time, every time there's been a problem. It's called Houston Strong. Prime Minister Modi and I have come to Houston to celebrate everything that unites America and India, our shared dreams and bright futures. I have also come to express my profound gratitude to the nearly 4 million amazing Indian Americans all across our country. You enrich our culture. You uphold our values. You uplift our communities, and you are truly proud to be American, and we are proud to have you as Americans. We thank you, we love you, and I want you to know my administration is fighting for you each and every day. I want to recognize U.S. Ambassador to India, Kenneth Juster, and Minister Jayshan Carr of India. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're also proudly joined by NASA Deputy Administrator Jim Moorhart, Deputy Secretary of Energy Dan Bruyette, Governor Matt Bevan of Kentucky, your State Attorney General Ken Paxton, a couple of very great senators. Kevin, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. We have a lot of senators. We have a lot of Congress people. There's Mr. Brady, Congressman Brady. He gave us a very, very nice tax cut, folks. Thank you, Kevin, very much. Thank you all for being here. Among the leaders here today for this remarkable celebration are many members of the House and Senate. They're all over the audience, including House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, and again, Senators Cornyn, Cruz, 
In my campaign for president, I promised all of that. If we were elected, India would have a true and great friend in the White House. And I can tell you, you have never had a better friend as president than President Donald Trump. That I can tell you. The Prime Minister knows that. On this day, I'm happy to report that the relationship between the United States and India is stronger than ever before. The ties between our two nations are grounded in our common values and our shared commitment to democracy. We are free nations with great faith and a fierce devotion to our national independence. We are governed by the rule of law, guided by commitment to justice, and strengthened by our love of liberty. Our two national constitutions both begin with the same three beautiful words, we the people. That means that in America and India alike, we honor, respect, trust, empower, and fight for the citizens we proudly serve. Under Prime Minister Modi's leadership, the world is witnessing a strong, sovereign, and thriving Republic of India. In a single decade, with the help of Prime Minister Modi's pro-growth reforms, India has lifted nearly 300 million people out of poverty. And that is an incredible number. Incredible. That's incredible. In the next decade, 140 million Indian households will rise to the middle class. In both India and the United States, we're seeing something really remarkable. Our people are prospering like never before because we are slashing bureaucracy and cutting job-killing red tape. In the United States, thanks to our massive tax cuts and all of our great senators and congressmen and women that are here today, and pro-worker policies, our economy is breaking one record after another. Since my election, we have created over 6 million new jobs, we have created over 750,000 jobs right here in Texas. And very importantly, that includes 70,000 new Texas manufacturing jobs. They said that couldn't be done. Unemployment, think of this, unemployment in Texas is currently at the lowest rate ever recorded in the history of our country. And unemployment in the United States has just reached the lowest level in over 51 years, and very soon we think that will be broken to be a historic number. Unemployment among African Americans, Asian Americans, and Hispanic Americans have all reached their lowest levels in the history of our country. Over the last two years, the unemployment rate among Indian Americans dropped by nearly 33 and one-third percent. Wages are rising, incomes are soaring, and inequality is falling at the fastest rate in many, many years. In the past 12 months alone, the average worker has taken home $1,000 extra in rising wages and over $3,000 with tax cuts and all of the other things that we've done. And for the first time in history, most new hires of prime working age are minorities and women. First time that's ever happened. 
Through our pledge to America's workers, we have secured commitments for nearly 14 million employment and training opportunities for American workers done through our great American companies. We passed the biggest tax cuts and the biggest tax reforms in the history of our country. We slashed a record number of job-killing regulations, giving the average American household more than $3,000 every year. And never in the history of our country, no matter how long the presidency, have regulations been cut to this extent. Every day, the Indian-American community is helping to strengthen our country and build our future. Indian-Americans are pioneering groundbreaking medicines to save countless lives. They're developing revolutionary technology that is changing the world. And they're founding new businesses that provide jobs to thousands of our fellow citizens. Prime Minister Modi, I look forward to working with you to make our nations even more prosperous than ever before. And that's what's happening. The economic miracles taking place today are just beginning. Here in the United States, there has never been a better time to hire, invest, grow, and pursue your dreams. Indian companies employ tens of thousands of Americans across a range of industries, including American steel. In 2018, India's JSW Steel announced that it would invest up to $500 million to revitalize a shuttered steel plant in the great state of Ohio. And we welcome India's growing investments right here in the Lone Star State. Nations around the world are investing in the United States because they know we have the best economy and the best workers in the world. They have never invested in our country like they are today. And we want to thank everybody. And India has never invested in the United States like it is doing today. And I want to say it's reciprocal because we're doing the same thing in India. On Tuesday, two Japanese companies, Toyota and Acer, announced a combined investment of almost $800 million, which will create over 900 new jobs right here in Texas. At the same time, we are working to expand American exports to India, one of the world's fastest growing markets. We are committed to ensuring the Indian people have access to the finest goods in the world. Products stamped with the beautiful phrase, made in the USA. And very soon, India will have access to another world-class American product, NBA basketball. Wow. <laughs> sounds good. That sounds good. Next week, thousands of people will gather in Mumbai to watch the first ever NBA basketball game in India. Am I invited, Mr. Prime Minister? <laughs> I may come. Be careful. I may come. When it comes to expanding our commercial relationship, no issue is more important than energy security. For the first time ever, the United States is the number one producer of both oil and natural gas on planet Earth, and number one by far, with much of it coming right here from the great state of Texas. That means more jobs, higher wages, and lower prices at the pump. Yesterday, we were thrilled to hear about the Indian company Petronitz Pledge 
to purchase up to 5 million tons of LNG per year from the United States, which could lead to billions of dollars of LNG exports to India in the coming years. And we have plenty of it. Over the last year, crude exports to India have grown by 400 percent, and liquefied natural gas exports continue to soar at record numbers. Thank you. These tremendous exports not only expand employment in America, but they increase freedom and security for India. To keep our nation safe, the United States and India are forging an even stronger security partnership. U.S. defense sales to India have also reached $18 billion over the past decade. We make the greatest defense mechanisms and equipment anywhere in the world, and India knows that well. We're looking forward to concluding several new defense deals very soon. There are a lot of them in the works. Here in America, we're creating the United States Space Force, and we're working closely with India to enhance space cooperation. In November, the United States and India will demonstrate a dramatic progress of our defense relationship, holding the first-ever tri-service military exercise between our nations. It's called Tiger Triumph. Good name. It's a good name. <laughs> Very good name. Today, we honor all of the brave American and Indian military service members who work together to safeguard our freedom. We stand proudly in defense of liberty, and we are committed to protecting innocent civilians from the threat of radical Islamic terrorism. Thank you. Both India and the United States also understand that to keep our community safe, we must protect our borders. Since taking office, my administration has launched a far-reaching effort to improve screening and vetting of applications for entry. We are working hard to ensure that those who would threaten our security are denied admission into our country, and we are enhancing our vetting efforts like never before, not even close. We're doing it on a daily basis, and we'll soon be setting records in every one of the aspects of border security. Border security is vital to the United States. Border security is vital to India. We understand that. And we are further taking unprecedented action to finally secure our southern border and stop illegal immigration. And I want to thank the President of Mexico, who right now has 27,000 soldiers on our southern border. It's been incredible what's taken place in a short period of time. Illegal immigration is deeply unfair to millions of wonderful legal immigrants who work hard, pay their taxes, follow our rules, and obey our laws. Yet there are those in Washington who would raid your health care to fund free benefits. They want to fund free benefits to those who enter our country illegally. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Because if we don't do it, they won't come. 
I will never allow politicians to take away your health care or give it to illegal immigrants. My administration believes our first duty is to the highest loyalty of all. We must always be for the American people, whether it's African American, Hispanic American, Indian American. We are going to take care of our citizens first. We are going to take care of our Indian American citizens before we take care of illegal immigrants that want to pour into our country. We want to build a nation where every family immigrant and U.S. born can live in a safe community with access to great school, work in a job you love, and have the best chance to reach the American dream. We love the American dream. And just in concluding, I want to say that America has always been a nation of pioneers and patriots risk-takers and free-thinkers, and dedicated workers who have honed a trade, mastered their field, and teach their children to always give their very, very best. Every day, Indian Americans help write this story of American greatness. And everyone here today has a crucial part to play in building an even grander and greater American and Indian future. To help achieve that exciting vision, we are strengthening our cherished bonds with the nation of India, and we are proving the awesome power of democracy and unlimited potential of free people. Together, we will continue to deepen the ties between our nations. We will honor the faith of dignity of our citizens. And we will achieve incredible advancements for our people, for our children, and for the world. We will discover new cures and save millions of lives. We will advance cutting-edge technologies and lift millions and millions of people out of poverty. We will pioneer new frontiers in space, working together, raising the sights of humanity. We will uphold our values, defend our liberty, and control our destiny. The United States and India will make our nation stronger, our people wealthier, our dreamers bigger, and our future brighter than ever before, and it won't even be close. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to especially thank a great man and a great leader, the leader of India, Prime Minister Modi, my friend. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless India. And God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite onto this stage in front of this incredible group of unbelievable people, Prime Minister Modi, who's going to give us some of his wisdom, and his wisdom is indeed great. Thank you all very much. It's been a great honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Your attention, please. Those of you that need translation of Prime Minister Modi's speech, please prepare your translation at this time. Channel one for Hindi to English. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you, President Trump. Thanks a lot. Howdy, my friends. ये जो दृश्य है ये जो माहौल है ये अकल्पनीय है और जब टेक्सस की बात आती है तो हर बात भव्य होनी विशाल होनी ये टैक्सस के स्वभाव में है आज टैक्सस की स्पिरिट यहां भी रिफ्लेक्ट हो रही है इस अपार जनसमूह की उपस्थिति केवल एरेथमेटिक तक ही सीमित नहीं है आज हम यहां एक नई हिस्ट्री एक नई हिस्ट्री बनते हुए देख रहे हैं और एक नई केमिस्ट्री भी एनआरजी की ये एनर्जी भारत और अमेरिका के बीच बढ़ती सीनर्जी की गवाह है प्रेसिडेंट ट्रंप का यहां आना अमेरिका की महान डेमोक्रेसी के अलग अलग प्रतिनिधियों का चाहे वो रिपब्लिकन हो डेमोक्रेट हो उनका यहां आना और भारत के लिए मेरे लिए इतनी प्रशंसा में काफी कुछ कहना मुझे बहुत शुभकामनाएं देना स्टेनी हायर सेनेटर कॉर्निन सेनेटर क्रूज और अन्य साथियों ने जो भारत की प्रगति के बारे में कहा है जो प्रशंसा की है वो अमेरिका में रहने वाले भारतीयों का उनके सामर्थ्य उनके अचीवमेंट का सम्मान है एक सौ तीस करोड़ यानी वन पॉइंट थ्री बिलियन भारतीयों का ये सम्मान है इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव के अलावा भी बहुत से अमेरिकी मित्र आज यहां इस कार्यक्रम में आए हैं मैं हर हिंदुस्तानी की तरफ से सभी का हृदय से स्वागत करता हूं मैं इस कार्यक्रम के आयोजकों को भी बधाई देता हूं मुझे बताया गया है कि इसके लिए बड़ी संख्या में लोगों ने रजिस्ट्रेशन कराया था लेकिन जगह की कमी के कारण हजारों लोग यहां नहीं आ पाए जो लोग यहां नहीं आ पाए मैं व्यक्तिगत रूप से उनसे क्षमा मांगता हूं मैं ह्यूस्टन टेक्सस प्रशासन को भी उनकी भी भरी भरी प्रशंसा करूंगा जिसने दो दिन पहले अचानक बदले मौसम के बाद इतने कम समय में हालात को संभाला
व्यवस्थाओं को चुस्त दुरुस्त किया और जैसा कि प्रेसिडेंट ट्रंप कह रहे थे ये सिद्ध किया कि ह्यूस्टन इज स्ट्रांग साथियों इस कार्यक्रम का नाम हाउडी मोदी है हाउडी मोदी लेकिन मोदी अकेले कुछ नहीं है मैं 130 करोड़ भारतीयों के आदेश पर काम करने वाला एक साधारण व्यक्ति हूं और इसलिए जब आपने पूछा है हाउडी मोदी तो मेरा तो मन कहता है उसका जवाब यही है भारत में सब अच्छा है सब चंगा सी बदाज मजामा थे अंता बागुंदी एल्ला चिन्ना गिरे एल्लाम सौ की आम सर्वच्छान चल आए शॉप खूब भालो सबू भल्ला अच्छी साथियों हमारे अमेरिका के मित्रों को ये आश्चर्य हो रहा होगा कि मैंने क्या बोला है प्रेसिडेंट ट्रंप और मेरे अमेरिकी मित्रों मैंने इतना ही कहा है एवरीथिंग इज फाइन लेकिन भारत की कुछ अलग अलग भाषाओं में हमारी लिबरल और डेमोक्रेटिक सोसाइटी की बहुत बड़ी पहचान है ये हमारी भाषाएं सदियों से हमारे देश में सैकड़ों भाषाएं सैकड़ों बोलियां सह अस्तित्व की भावना के साथ आगे बढ़ रही है और आज भी करोड़ों लोगों की मातृभाषा बनी हुई है और साथियों सिर्फ भाषा ही नहीं हमारे देश में अलग अलग पंथ दर्जनों संप्रदाय अलग अलग पूजा पद्धतियां सैकड़ों तरह का अलग अलग क्षेत्रीय खान पान अलग अलग वेशभूषा अलग अलग मौसम ऋतु चक्र इस धरती को अद्भुत बनाते हैं विविधता में एकता यही हमारी धरोहर है यही हमारी विशेषता है भारत की यही डायवर्सिटी हमारी वाइब्रेंट डेमोक्रेसी का आधार है यही हमारी शक्ति है यही हमारी प्रेरणा है हम जहां भी जाते हैं 
डायवर्सिटी डेमोक्रेसी के संस्कार साथ साथ लेकर के साथ चले जाते हैं आज यहां इस स्टेडियम में बैठे 50,000 से ज्यादा 50,000 से ज्यादा भारतीय हमारी महान परंपरा के प्रतिनिधि बनकर आज यहां उपस्थित है आप में से कई तो ऐसे भी हैं जिन्होंने भारत में डेमोक्रेसी के सबसे बड़े उत्सव 2019 के चुनाव में भी अपना सक्रिय योगदान दिया है वाकई एक ऐसा चुनाव था जिसने इंडियन डेमोक्रेसी की शक्ति का परचम पूरी दुनिया में लहरा दिया इस चुनाव में इकसठ करोड़ यानी कि 610 मिलियन से अधिक वोटर्स ने हिस्सा लिया एक तरह से अमेरिका की टोटल पॉपुलेशन का लगभग डबल इसमें भी आठ करोड़ यानी 80 मिलियन युवा तो ऐसे हैं जो फर्स्ट टाइम वोटर थे भारत की डेमोक्रेसी के इतिहास में सबसे ज्यादा विमेन वोटर्स ने इस बार वोट डाला था और इस बार सबसे ज्यादा संख्या में महिलाएं चुनकर भी आई हैं साथियों 2019 के चुनाव ने एक और नया रिकॉर्ड स्थापित किया साठ साल के बाद आफ्टर सिक्स डेकेट्स साठ साल के बाद ऐसा हुआ elected with an absolute majority completed its five year term and came back with an even greater majority now why did this happen who made it happen no not because of modi this is because of the indians friends indians are known for their patience however now we are impatient we are impatient for the development of our country we are impatient to take the country to new heights in the 21st century today the buzzword in india is development the greatest motto in india today is collective efforts inclusive growth today the biggest policy in india is public participation today the strongest sentiment among indians is the resolve to attain and today india's greatest resolve is the creation of a new india
India today is working tirelessly day and night in order to realize this dream of a new India. And what is most special about it is that we are not competing against anyone else but with ourselves. We are challenging ourselves. We are changing ourselves. Friends, today, India wants to move forward at a much faster pace than before. Today, India is challenging the mindset of those who say that and this mindset is nothing will ever change. In the last five years, 1.3 billion Indians have together achieved results in every field results that no one could have even imagined were possible earlier. We are aiming high. We are achieving higher. Brothers and sisters, it took seven decades in our country to achieve a rural sanitation coverage of 38 percent. In five years, we made 110 million or more than 110 million toilets. Today, the rural sanitation coverage is 99%. In our country, it took seven decades for households to have cooking gas connection and it stood at 55%. Within five years, we took this figure up to 95%. And within only five years, we added 150 million new gas connections. In India, it took seven decades to achieve 55% rural road connectivity. In just five years, we have taken this figure to 97%. In just five years, we constructed over 200,000 kilometers of roads in rural areas. In seven decades, less than 50% of people in the country had a bank account. And today, in five years, nearly 100% families are part of the banking system. In five years, over, over 370 million bank accounts have been opened. Friends, now that people need 
to be less worried about their basic necessities, they are able to dream big and are focusing their energy on achieving their goals. My friends, for us, ease of doing business is important to us. However, the ease of living is equally important. And the way to achieve this is by empowering people. It is only when the common man is empowered that social and economic development of the country will take place at a fast pace. Let me give you an example. Friends, it is often said today that data is the new oil. You all are from Houston. In Houston, I'm sure you understand very well what it means. In fact, I would further add that data is the new gold. The entire focus of Industry 4.0 is on data. Do you know? And I want you to pay close attention to what I'm saying. Do you know which country offers data at the lowest rate in the world? It is India. Today, in India, 1 GB of data costs only around 25 to 30 cents, which means a quarter of a dollar. And I would also like to tell you that the global average price of 1 GB data today is about 25 to 30 times this amount. This affordable data is the new identity of digital India. Affordable data has redefined governance in India. Today, nearly Today in India, nearly 10,000 services of the central and state governments are available online. Friends, there was a time when it would take two, even three months for a passport to be ready. Today, a passport is delivered to your home in less than a week. Earlier, it used to be so difficult to get a visa. And I think you all know this better than me. And today, U.S. is one of the biggest users of India's e-visa facility. Friends, there was a time when the registration of a new company would take two or three weeks. Now, a new company can be registered in just 24 hours. There was a time when filing tax returns was a big headache. Getting your tax refund could take months. Now, the changes that have taken place 
If you hear about them, they will amaze you. This time, on the 31st of August, on just one day, I am just talking about one single day. In one day, approximately 5 million people Five million people filed their income tax return online. That is, five million returns were filed in a single day. More than double the total population of Houston. And another big achievement tax refunds that used to take months. They are now received within a week or 10 days and are transferred directly into the taxpayer's bank account. Brothers and sisters, for any country striving for development, it is essential to have welfare schemes for their citizens for needy citizens in particular. Welfare schemes are important, along with running welfare schemes for needy citizens in order to build a new India. It is also essential to bid farewell to a few things. We have given a lot of wealth, uh, importance to welfare, but also to farewells. On the 2nd of October this year, as the country celebrates the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, India will bid farewell to open defecation. In the last five years, India has also bid farewell to over 1,500 outdated laws. The complex web of dozens of taxes that existed in India were an obstacle to creating a business-friendly environment. Our government has bid farewell to this web of taxes and implemented GST, the Goods and Services Tax, after years, we have made the dream of one nation, one tax come true in our country. Friends, we are setting ourselves a challenge to do away with corruption. And we are working towards bidding farewell to it at all levels. In the last two or three years, India, India has also bid farewell to 350,000 shell companies. We have also we have also bid farewell to over 80 million fake names, which existed just on paper in order to avail undue benefits from government schemes and friends. Can you imagine how much money we have saved by preventing it from falling into the wrong hands? Approximately 1.5 trillion rupees that is almost 20 billion US dollars. In our country, we are creating a transparent ecosystem so that the benefits of development can be enjoyed by every Indian. And brothers and sisters, depriving even one Indian of development 
is not acceptable to India. The country was also facing another challenge for the last 70 years, a challenge that India bid farewell to only recently. You have understood. And that is Article 370. Article 370. Article 370. Deprived the people of Jammu, Kashmir, and Ladakh of uh, development and equal rights. The forces fanning terrorism and separatism were exploiting the situation. Now, the same rights that were given by the Constitution of India to the rest of the Indians have now also been given to the people of Jammu, Kashmir, and Ladakh. the discrimination against their women, children, and traditionally underprivileged has been put to an end. Friends, in the upper and lower houses of our parliament, this topic was debated extensively for hours, and the proceedings were also telecast live across the country and across the world. Although our party does not have a majority in the upper house, that is in the Rajya Sabha. Despite this, both houses of our parliament, the upper house and the lower house, both the houses of our parliament passed all related decisions on this with a two-third majority. I would like to request all of you for the parliamentarians of India should receive a standing ovation for what they have done. Thank you very much, all of you. India's actions within its boundaries are causing discomfort to some people. Who are unable to manage their own country. These people have put their hatred of India at the center of their political agenda. These are people who want unrest. 
These are people who support terrorism and who nurture terrorism. You know them very well. You know who they are. It's not just you. The whole world knows who they are. Whether it was 9-11 in America or the 26-11 attack in Mumbai, where were the conspirators of these attacks found? Friends, the time has come to fight a decisive battle against terrorism and against all those who promote terrorism. I would like to reiterate the fact that President Trump is firmly committed to fighting this battle against terrorism. F President Trump's commitment to fight terrorism. Let us give him a standing ovation for his commitment to fight terrorism. Thank you, friends, brothers and sisters. A lot is happening in India, and a lot is changing. And 